Today we are making stuffed acorn squash a la norma, borrowed of course from spaghetti a la norma, which is spaghetti in tomato sauce with fried eggplant and some type of cheese, ricotta salada. Today I'm using fresh mozzarella, so it's really gonna have that amazing cheese pull element. I'm adding in a few little gems of pine nuts, lots of little pops of fatty flavor. So you might know lots of members of my family are vegetarians, which is why at all of our meals, but especially at Thanksgiving, we really like to amp up the vegetable offerings. And this is a dish that's gorgeous as a side dish. Yes, absolutely. If you're having turkey dinner, this goes great. But um, as a vegetarian, it really eats like a meal. And if you want a nice versatile option on your table, that's great. If you have people who are gluten-free or lactose-free vegetarians, it accommodates tons of different eating profiles. So you can really, it's very versatile. You can really change it up as you need. Obviously you would leave the cheese off. So the first thing we wanna do is cut up our acorn squash, which looks like this. The versatility of the vegetable kingdom is part of what makes elevating vegetables so much fun. I think there was a time in our lives, maybe if you were of the, if you were raised where like boiled vegetables were your option, where vegetables didn't feel fun. They definitely didn't feel like they were on par with the juicy, meaty, fatty elements of your meal. And now I feel like the culinary world is open to just what you can do with, with like the variety of vegetables. Squash is one such place where, I'm going to focus here for one second, <laughs> um, where there is like a taste for everything. If you want something sweeter, you can go butternut squash or, or um, kabocha squash if you want something, and they're both really meaty. If you want something more like textural and light spaghetti squash with the tendrils, it feels like spaghetti. Acorn squash I find is the most savory of the squashes. And so you're, it's a really nice stand in here for that sort of spaghetti savory element we're going for. You split it in half, it looks like this. We're gonna scoop the seeds out and then we're gonna give them a little rub down with olive oil. Should I save these seeds? Oh, I'll save the seeds. Philomena, my oldest, is obsessed with roasted pumpkin seeds of any kind, and she has her recipe. So uh, I will leave these for her. I'm gonna take your spoon and work it out. And you do kind of want to scrape away any little sort of juicier flesh pieces like that. I find that is the, the one place where you can get tricked up and have the flavor get a little bitter on you. All right, so it'll look like that. I'm gonna work my way through these guys. So on the topic of elevating vegetables, um, because my mom is vegetarian and my dad is not, <laughs> she would play with all different kinds of cuisine profiles, Turkish, Asian, Indian, um, just to have there be lots of flavor and depth and variety on our table. But one of the ways that she got us all excited about acorn squash was she would do it candied, which basically just means like, a lot of butter and brown sugar over top as it roasts and it becomes so sweet and succulent. And it's actually because the squash itself is so savory in nature and we're talking like a little bit of butter and brown sugar. It's not crazy over the top, but it's just enough sweetness to lace it so that it really becomes majorly tempting on the table, which if you're trying to get your kids and your carnivorous husband to be super excited about squash is one option. And this recipe today is definitely another. So now that we have the squash ready to go, we are just going to grease them a little bit with some olive oil. And I just do this in my hands because it's, you don't need a lot. You just want enough to kind of seal in the flavor and help them develop that golden brown color that we love. These are nice and greased. Let me grab my kosher salt. And you do just want to give your veg a quick scrub before you slice and prepare them so they're nice and clean, no dirt. Little pinches of salt here in the center of the flesh, and then they're gonna go cut side down onto our parchment lined baking sheet. And the parchment liner is just to help make clean up a breeze. Into a 425 degree oven. So a pretty high heat here because we don't want them to burn and we don't want them to dry out. Um, we want them to cook a little bit more quickly. We wanna develop some color, which is always nice. And a slightly higher heat is good for those things. Next up, we will prepare our eggplant. I started by slicing the eggplant into rounds and now I'll just work through and make nice little one inch cubes. Um, I, I was nerding out about why we should or should not salt eggplant before you cook it. And um, maybe you don't know about this controversy. So, so let me read you in. Um, it's 
it's pretty funny actually because people are very wedded to like whether or not you're supposed to salt your eggplant before you cook it or not. The debate was because some people thought that salting eggplant made it feel leathery, that like taking out so much of the moisture made it a tougher chew. Um, but the people who believe in salting uh, would say that it actually is necessary because it flavors the whole like interior of the eggplant. So not just the exterior is delicious and flavorful when you salt it when it's cooking. And also that it does draw out some of the bitterness that is sometimes found in eggplants. I was doing a little research <laughs> and it turns out that um, salting eggplants was actually way more important back in the day before eggplants had been bred to be as like, generally speaking, creamy and not bitter as they are back in the day, apparently they were very bitter and you absolutely had to salt them to make them tolerable to eat. But the long and short of it now is that you can salt them if you have time. You don't have to salt them if you don't want to. I do find that when I salt them, they have a little bit more flavor throughout, which I love. They stay a little bit lighter and crisper in the frying process. They don't drink up as much of that oil. So they're both good. I love a delicious oil laden piece of eggplant and I like a lighter crispier one too. So there is no wrong way to do it. But today I will show you how to salt them because that's how I learned to make spaghetti alla norma. Grab a paper towel and just line the bottom of a sheet tray. And then you just wanna spread your eggplant out all over. And then we're gonna quickly salt them and I'll show you one little move that helps to draw out even more moisture. Grab your kosher salt, give them a quick sprinkle all over. Now, one thing that I do like to do is just create a little weight on top. So grab anything, you could put another sheet tray on top with another piece of um, paper towel, that's really easy, and then just weight it down with some heavy cans. I'm using my other sheet tray. It's in the oven with our um, acorn squash, as you know. So this is what we're doing today. And then we let this hang out for 20 minutes. The next thing we'll do is just give our pine nuts a quick toast. And I think this is another step that not totally necessary. There's nothing wrong with a raw pine nut in here. It's very tender and just like a perfect little pop, not, not like crunchy or anything in your mouth. Um, I just like to toast them because I find it develops a little bit more of that sort of smoked essence of the nut. And I like that because it adds a little extra dynamic in here. I put the raw pine nuts into a dry skillet. So I have this over a medium low, like almost on the verge of low heat because pine nuts are so delicate, so tender and, and just like very fatty, obviously. So the fat's going to come to the surface really quickly. I don't want to risk scorching them. I don't want them to burn. You really don't want to waste your pine nuts. They are very pricey. And speaking of which, you can definitely do this with chopped up walnuts. Um, if you have those instead, taste equally delicious. Let's chop up some garlic because obviously a beautiful pasta sauce needs some garlic in it and we are basically replicating that sauce and putting it inside a vegetable. Um, I'm going to just smash up four little cloves of garlic. You can do three mediums if you have that. And then I'm going to give them a rough mince. I do like to keep them a little bit on the chunkier side, um, mainly because I kind of like as they, as they cook and bathe in that tomato sauce, they just get so soft and tender anyway. I kind of like that little pop of garlic flavor when you hit it. Um, it by the way, the reason I turn around is because my kitchen already, in that short period of time, started smelling very toasty. So wake up your senses when you're cooking with pine nuts. You gotta use eyes, nose, ears, mouth, all of the above. Okay, <laughs> chopping garlic. You guys have seen me do this before. Okay, that's all. We're just gonna leave that to the side um, until we're ready to cook it with the eggplant once that's done sweating. The problem is now the garlic is in my nose so I'm not able to smell when these are burning. <laughs> not burning, just gorgeous. Oh, but look at how golden brown certain ones of those are getting. It sort of smells like popcorn. Very, very rich and buttery. Washing my hands. Obviously the skillet is still hot. It was on the stove. So I turned the heat off just slightly before they were totally done because they are gonna sit in that heat and I don't want them overcooked. I have a track record of occasionally forgetting what I was doing and burning that item. So I am pulling it off a little early this time. Um, eggplant is almost ready to go. Let's chop up our beautiful buffalo mozzarella. I like to do this in cubes as well, sort of like half the size of our eggplant chunks because I want it distributed throughout the whole mix. And I like little melting 
bombs of mozzarella throughout. So just give yourself, yeah, maybe even smaller. It's like a quarter inch slice. And you should do this when the mozzarella is a little bit chilled because it will just make your life easier. It won't sort of pull apart as easily as totally fresh mozzarella would. So just stick it in the fridge, even just 20 minutes, if you are lucky enough to have gotten warm, fresh mozzarella. But do also make sure that you buy a second ball to eat warm and fresh with a little bit of olive oil and salt, maybe some crusty bread if you have it, and a few tears of fresh basil. Mozzarella is ready to go. There's almost nothing for me to snack on while I'm making this dish, which is tragedy. Let's check on the squash. <gasps> mm. Ooh. Squash is talking. Here, come on this side, you'll see the bubbles. All right, those have been in about 20 minutes. We're gonna let them go another 10, 15 probably. And I think we should cook some eggplant. As I said, if you don't have the full 20 minutes to wait, you don't have to wait. I'll put about a quarter cup of olive oil into my skillet. In my case, it is very large, so I probably put a little bit more than a quarter cup, just because you want like you want a very shallow fry, just enough to coat the bottom of your pan and develop nice golden color and flavor for your eggplant. Take off your weight and check out how the paper towel has been soaking up any of the moisture that's come out on the surface of the eggplant. Once the oil is nice and shimmering, add those in. Oh, the bottom really soaked up some liquid. Check that out. Lovely. Well, let's try this. <laughs> and if you ended up with more eggplant than could comfortably fit along the um, surface of your pan, just go ahead and work in batches. Better not to have the eggplant steam. You kind of want at least one side of every wedge of eggplant to develop maximum color and maximum flavor. Then let them hang out. They're already salted. The olive oil is going to come up to heat, sizzle them on one side. In about three minutes, we will toss, continue cooking. All told, we'll cook about seven minutes here just until the eggplant is softened, it's flavorful, it has developed that great color, and then we'll start building the rest of the sauce. So I caught it looking a little dry in the pan. I'll just add a splash more olive oil mainly just because the surface area is big in this one. But you can hear the noise, the sound of happiness happening. All right, let's toss them. We want to get the other sides nice and golden brown too. It should release really easily from your pan, thanks to that oil. And you don't want to toss too often or too hard as it's coming into that sort of softened phase because we don't want to break the eggplant up. We just want to move it around so once you've sort of flipped everything then be careful because it's hot then um, just give it a good shake you can see there's a couple pieces really starting to develop that gorgeous golden brown color and back to the heat meanwhile let's check on our squash it's been in about 35 minutes and i just want to make sure that it's softening but not burning Go to a big guy. Oh, nice fork tender, gorgeous. I will tell you, thanks to you guys, I am cooking with a timer normally. <laughs> normally I'm going by nose and guess, um, but the timer has helped. So you can see that there wasn't a ton of liquid to come out in these squash, but a little bit has come out here. The skin is nice and softened. We're getting, actually this is the biggest one. So I do wanna check and make sure. <gasps> Glorious. And then of course, once you turn them over, they are happy little boats, ready to be stuffed full of our a la norma sauce. Ooh, you are hot. Oh yeah, and check out this gorgeous little bit of golden brown flavor happening there. So the eggplant is looking glorious right now. So ready to drink up the flavors we're gonna add next and chili flake, oregano, garlic. One thing I do wanna say is don't be tempted to over oil. Sometimes in the beginning of the cook process, the eggplant will look a little dried out. You just want enough oil on the base of your pan to make sure it's not sticking. You want that nice golden browning happening, but don't add too much oil because then what you end up with at the end is 
too much grease as the eggplant sort of like releases what it has back into the pot. Just a word of warning, because I've done it before. So at this point, I'm gonna drop the heat to low, because it has plenty of heat going in the hot oil already, and add in our four cloves of chopped garlic, plus about a teaspoon of dried oregano, and another, it depends on how much heat you like. I'm gonna start with half a teaspoon of red chili flakes here. You don't have to add them at all if you're not into spicy. But now I'll just quickly let those herbs and garlic fry in the oil. Oh my word. <laughs> the scenting in this house is beyond right now. Come see, come see. And you want that garlic and the oregano and the chili flake having a moment in that hot oil so they really bloom and flavor the sauce that will become a big part of what flavors this whole filling for your squash. Even still, try not to move the eggplant around more than you need to. I like to do this sort of toss method because it helps me distribute without moving it with a spoon that could risk breaking up your eggplant. Literally 30 seconds more here just to give that garlic a chance to soften and tenderize a little bit. And then I'm gonna go in with a cup and a half of crushed tomatoes. And again, we're over a low heat right now. Most of that sizzle that you're hearing is left over from the hot oil that had been cooking our eggplant. The tomatoes will of course cool this mix down. We'll continue simmering over a medium low heat, maybe another five minutes just to let the tomato come up to heat, everything to blend together, everything to unify, and then we will take it off the heat and let it cool just a bit before adding in the cheese and the pine nuts. Let's taste and make sure we don't need to add anything before we let it come off the heat and start to cool. All I'm gonna say. And wow. And you gotta make it. So the finishing touch is to make a little breadcrumb mixture that's gonna get sprinkled over the filled squash and create like a little extra texture, a little extra golden brown surface. You eat with your eyes first. This is competing on a Thanksgiving table filled with so many other rich and heavenly hedonistic delights, so we gotta make it compete. Breadcrumbs help. And these are gluten-free panko breadcrumbs. You can use any breadcrumbs you like, but this is one way you can also make this a gluten-free dish, which is lovely. Um, all I'm gonna season these with, because everything else in this dish is so flavorful, is the remaining teaspoon of dried oregano. Give that a little toss and set that to the side. Oh, and some olive oil. Maybe a, a tablespoon or two of olive oil just to actually, you know what we could have done? We could have spooned some olive oil out of that little eggplant mix, but for another time, another place. <laughs> and that little bit of olive oil in this mix will give you nice texture on here so that some of the pieces can hold together. Um, and it also obviously just speeds along the crisping and the crunching and the golden browning effect. You're looking for that nice kind of fluffy, wet sand texture. Now all that's left to do is grab your beautiful eggplant and tomato sauce with the chili flake and the garlic in there, a little oregano. I flipped my squash over when they came out of the oven to let as much of the moisture continue to evaporate as possible, so they've cooled just a little bit as well. Now we are going to stir in our fresh mozzarella and our toasted pine nuts. And then just give them a quick toss into your eggplant mix. Working a little bit quickly so that your cheese doesn't melt. Mm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, beautiful. And just scoop up little ladles full to stuff into your acorn squash. I'm sorry, this is like, nobody's coming to your Thanksgiving saying, oh my gosh, and what's that vegetable? No, they're coming to your house and saying, I want that first. I need that first. Give me one of your stuffed acorn squash a la norma. Please and thank you. Don't leave me hanging. 
not just for vegetarians. Make sure everybody is nice and topped up, especially those bigger pieces. Honestly, the abundant moment of this filling and sauce is really making me so happy, as is the inadvertent cheese ball. Mm, breadcrumbs, sprinkle, sprinkle, just to give us that great little crunch and texture right on top. And then I have one last trick for you, just one. It's the final countdown to the final trick for your beautiful little veggie side. Back into our 425 degree oven, these go another 15 to 20 minutes just to let the breadcrumbs toast and the cheese melt and the squash finish tenderizing, although they're basically all the way there. We'll be back. I smell it, I smell it happening. The squash has been in like 18 minutes. Look what's happening to the place that I tasted. Sure did. Just to be able to confirm for you that this is freaking delicious and gorgeous and so deserving of your love, attention, appreciation, and selection for your Thanksgiving table. But we're not done yet, okay? So what you wanna do is let these cool like 15 minutes and it actually is really useful in this case to just drink up all the sauces and the juices into the squash, make the whole thing flavored with that Ala Norma perfection. But after you've waited, what you're gonna do is get yourself one of these pretty little squash halves and you can Finish this up with um, some Parmesan cheese is perfect here. Something a little salty, more salty than anything else is what you want here just to like gild the lily at the top. I happen to have some ricotta salata, which is salty and creamy and mild. You don't need to compete with the flavor profile happening here. It is already perfection. And just remember that you are righty, not a lefty and grate a little bit over top. This cheese is super soft too, so it will melt down very quickly. Grab a little bundle of fresh, beautiful, fragrant basil and just scatter that over top. Mm -hmm. You could also chiffonade, you just do a little thin slice on it. Just add a little freshness. And then final, final, final touch. In keeping with the Sicilian instinct to do sour and salty and sweet all in the same bite. Let's add a little bit of honey, just to make it extra glorious. And then you know what we're gonna do. Mm -mm -mm. And the good news is you scrubbed your squash even better if you can grab it organic. So we're gonna eat the skin too. A perfectly contained package of flavor insanity. Look at that mozzarella cheese pull. Yes, ma'am. Keep it going. The fresh basil on top. Mm. Mm. Guys, the honey! The honey, what's up? Oh my gosh. And that ricotta on top, ricotta salada. Mm. That is literally how I want to eat every single day. Flavor here. Healthy, good stuff too, but flavor here. Oh, it's pure satisfaction. I am, I am ready to indulge. And um, if you thought vegetables were boring, no more. Mm.